Hello, in this demonstration I am going to show you how to create a Windows PE boot image. PE is the pre-installation environment. We need to start by first of all launching the Microsoft Windows Automated Installation Kit, which is the utility that you can use to create your own Windows PE boot disk. Then from here I want to click on Deployment Tools Command Prompt. This is the utility that's going to allow me to create a Windows PE boot disk. The first step we're going to do to get started is run a script called copy pe.cmd and then I'm going to choose AMD64 because I'm using a 64-bit processor. If you were using a 32-bit processor you would do x86. I'm going to change mine back to AMD. 64 and I want to uh, have the output of this script run into the C colon slash winpe folder. What this is doing is building a folder structure that has all of the necessary files to create a Windows PE boot disk. So that script is done so the next thing we're going to do is get the actual boot image file called winpe.wim located in the WinPE folder so if we want to see that file we could type in dir and you'll see there's winpe.wim this is the actual boot up image that a WinPE disk will use and for organizational reasons we want to put this file into the ISO folder I'm trying to organize all of my files into the ISO folder uh, so they're in one tidy location when we go to create our final ISO image. So I want to copy C colon slash winpe slash winpe dot wim and place it in the C colon slash winpe slash ISO slash sources folder and I want to call it boot dot wim as its final destination name. So I'm going to hit enter and I've now copied winpe.wim into my ISO sources folder and I've called it boot.wim. I'm going to make it a little easier on myself and I'm going to copy the imagex.exe utility into my ISO folder as well. Uh, just thinking ahead that if we ever boot a computer using a Windows PE disk and we want to capture an image uh, ImageX is there and ready for us. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and I'm going to use quotes here because it's a long file name C colon slash program files slash windows AIK slash tools slash AMD 64 remember I'm doing that because it's a 64-bit environment I'm working in if you're in a 32-bit environment use x86 and then I am going to select image x dot exe quote and I want to put that into C colon slash winpe slash ISO and I'll hit enter and I've now copied image x just in case I want it later on so the next thing I need to do is to take my ISO folder and turn it into an actual ISO. So I can burn that onto a CD or DVD or I can keep it electronic and load it using an ISO reader. So I'm going to use a utility called OSCDIMG.exe which will create a series of files and turn it into an ISO and I want to use the dash N option to support long file names and then I have to use the dash B option to declare where the boot sector is located and that's what's going to start the bootable process as you turn your computer on and boot off of a Windows PE disk. So there's no space after dash B I just need to type right in there C colon slash winpe slash E T F S B -O -O -T dot com. And this file was put into the WinPE folder when I ran my copy PE.cmd a little earlier. 
I now need to define which files we'll use to create the rest of the ISO image. So that's going to be located at C colon slash winpe dot or winpe slash ISO. And then I need to define where to output my final ISO file. And that's going to be located at C colon slash winpe slash winpe dot ISO. Let's review here. We're going to use the OSC DIMG.exe utility to create an ISO file. We're going to use the dash N option to support long file names and we'll use the dash B option to locate our boot sector file. And there's no space after dash B. You just define where that boot sector file is located, which is located at C colon slash winpe slash etfsboot.com on my computer. From there, you have to define the additional files you will incorporate into your ISO image, which I have all located in the C colon slash winpe folder slash ISO folder. And the output ISO file, I want to save at C colon slash winpe, and I want the file called slash winpe.iso. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and I am now creating an ISO file. It's almost done, and now it is done, so I'm going to exit out of this, and just to validate that it's really there, I'm going to go into the C drive and browse to the WinPE folder, and there it is, WinPE, it's a disk image file. If I right click on it and select properties, you will see it's a disk image file, ISO, it's 160 MBs in size. The next step for me would be to either burn this winpe.iso file onto a CD or a DVD, or it would be to keep it electronic and load it using an ISO reader. For now, I'm just going to right click on winpe and I'm going to copy it because I want to take it away from my Windows 7 virtual machine and I want to paste it on the actual host computer. So I'm going to go down below my virtual machine, right click and paste and you'll see that if I minimize my Windows 7 virtual computer I've got a winpe.iso file on my host computer. Now I can burn it much easier or use it electronically much easier. So that concludes my demonstration on how to create a Windows PE boot disk using the Windows 7 automated installation kit. I hope you've enjoyed this video brought to you by BrickHouseLabs.com and thank you very much for watching.